Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We're joined today by Robert Lovingood. He is a supervisor in San Bernardino County. He represents the high desert and he was recently named the president of Sandbag. Congratulations, sir. Sandbag is what? Sandbags, organization of governments. Uh, we're responsible for transportation development throughout the county. San Bernardino being a self-help county, yeah. uh, passed uh, Measure I. And that's really strengthened our opportunities within transportation. Let's talk about that because it is a very significant vote for any county, whether they're going to pass what's known as self-help, like yes. you described. Because with self-help, if the county's willing to tax itself yes. for transportation, what does the county then access? Well, I mean, it increases the amount of federal funding, state fundings. Uh, it really allows us to springboard and in and, and the first district. And if we look at the 15-215 interchange, right. it's being completed. Oh, yeah, right. Now the exciting well, thing right, is right. it's now a 35 to an hour commute uh, versus an hour and a half to two hours. Right. And so that's the key is the ability to leverage the local dollars with state and federal dollars. Yes. Because so often with these grants that are given by the state or federal government, they require a local match. That's and if you don't have Measure I like you do, you're scrambling. And I can share the constituents really mm -hmm. get the, the, the big uh, pat on the back, right. pass the measure by 80%, wow. willing to participate. When? Do, you, do you remember when it was? We're going back, well. Uh, 10 years ago maybe? Yep. Or about yes, 10, so ten, years ten years ago when they went back, mm -hmm. they, went, they, they stepped up from right. the original. I see. And, and then they extended again. And it was overwhelmingly successful. And we have a, uh, we just have to continue that opportunity. Right. My question, though, is we know that federal funds still are coming down. I mean, there are some issues with the highway bill, but that's been resolved. But the state as well, the state is grappling with transportation funding. I think we're still in special session. <laughs> they started last summer. I don't mean now, I mean last summer. Yes. So are there even <coughs> state funds to access? You know, it's a challenge. There's different pockets, right. but there's programs, there's been reductions in services, mm -hmm. or I'd say reductions in contracts. We had a realignment of 395 okay. uh, that the state, Caltrans, pulled back mm. uh, for an right. interim basis. Right. So they are, they're, they're going to struggle with that, and we have to find a way, and I say that, to really look at a system uh, which has to be revamped effectively. Are you working as president of Sandbag or as a supervisor for one of the most significant counties in our state with Sacramento to try to get a handle on this transportation funding crisis? Look, you could say a lot of things about the gas tax, right. but what we know is we're not getting as much bang for our buck on the gas tax because of inflation, because of electric vehicles, hybrid vehicles, no increase in 22 years. It's just, you know, those are the facts. And so are you working with Sacramento? Well, when I see that, I see people in Sacramento. Assemblyman Jay Obernolte has oh, come yes. up with a really uh, a nice five-point plan. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't increase taxes. Right. But really changes the dollars. The dollars is consistently Sacramento has siphoned off highway dollars for other uses. And you know what? I wish I could call you out on that. But you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is a fact. You that, can't divert half the dollars. Right during times of crisis and not repay it. Yeah. And that's had a big impact. But you're going to have to look because you're right. Look, I'm going to take your taxes mm -hmm. and buy and pay me to get an electric car. Okay, so, so now you had a double whammy, so you're getting... So here's the question then. Okay. In terms of electric cars, in terms of hybrids, I drive a hybrid, I admit it, um, I'm paying less gas tax. Right. Should electric vehicles and or hybrids be required to pay a bump in their registration because we're not paying the gas tax that the regular vehicles are? I think it's going to have to be on the table. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that, uh, you know, the, at the state level they're going to right. look at. But again, understand that I'm still, you're still taking my tax dollars to reward you to drive an electric car and you're not contributing to the system. Right. And with gas prices where they are and projected to right. be. Right, gas prices being low. Right. Correct. Yeah, I want to ask you about another proposal because it really would impact your constituents, right. and that's vehicle miles traveled. Yes. Looking at the odometer and then taxing based upon the odometer. Let's put aside the privacy issues. Correct. It's a valid issue, but let's put it aside. Right. I think about so many people in Victorville that travel over the pass, and why are they in Victorville? R relatively less expensive homes, Correct. nice community, but you know, should they be punished for picking that? when they need to get into San Bernardino. I, I don't think so, and, and that's where I think, uh, I think it really has to be balanced. Mm -hmm. We export 70,000 commuters every day. 
Uh, most of those folks are into the Inland Valleys, Orange County. Right. They're supporting the economy. Right. If you're going to penalize them with additional taxes for going to work and being homeowners and raising families, it's don't tricky believe it's because fair. Because the flip side is they do use the roads more. Well, but then again, I could bring that back to they use our roads. <laughs> well stated. Okay. Well stated. And then everybody uses those on the weekends to go to Vegas, the mountains, and the desert. Let's talk about a whole other different item, and right. that is Prop 57. Our viewers may not know what Prop 57 is because the numbers just came out. But Prop 57 is the initiative uh, supported by Governor Jerry Brown that would change the way parole is granted. And essentially, let me just lay it out for sure. you and then we'll get, for those convicted of nonviolent crimes, they would more easily be granted parole. The, well, let you tell me the concern because I could say it, but I want you to tell me the concern. It deals with which offenses are considered and uh, prior Well, benefits. let's go back and look at the most recent Please. Prop 47. Let's see the problem social impacts that we're having. When I say that, uh, the reduction of a felony under $950. Right. It's, it's horrible. You have people in grocery stores counting what they're going to steal because they realize it's a citation. Now you're really, the discussion is going to be, what's really going to be the challenge is the loopholes. And I say the loopholes, those that they miss. Those with a multiple felon record that could be violent or had a tendency to be violent, I don't think that's the way it works. And, and so let, let me be clear. So yes. you, what Mr. Lovingood is saying is that under the measure, Prior offenses are not considered yes. when looking at parole. Enhancements are not considered when looking at parole. I'm not taking a position. I'm just stating the facts. Right. And I know that's of concern to you. It's a great concern. Mm -hmm. Public safety is our concern for our constituents. When we look at this impact and we look back at the most recent, we know that, one, we're not going to be funded. We're not going to be able to fund our police department, our sheriff's department mm -hmm. to really have enforcement. And then you think of the ramifications. Again, we're not talking about low-level first offenders. You're talking about multiple offenses being released. And that's because, I mean, it, it's tricky. It's supposed to be focused upon those convicted of nonviolent crimes. Right. But what you're saying is there may be more to the story. We're still struggling with the last proposition. But here's what's and interesting about 47, and, and I hear you loud and clear. 47, of course, reclassified certain offenses from felonies to misdemeanors. Yes. Um, that was voter passed. Correct. There was a frustration yes. amongst the voters about low-level drug offenses. It's always tricky when you get voter-written initiatives because they can't be properly vetted. And if there's a silver lining, we don't have overcrowded prisons anymore, which gets us out from under the weight of the Supreme Court. Well, only the state. What they've done is they've taken the push that responsibility <laughs> right. to the county. But 47 has helped counties a bit, too, because... But we only had half the funding the state received. Yeah. And here's my thought on this, and when I say this, look, I look at 47 and I say, you take a young kid making stupid mistakes, do you really need to put him in the university so he comes out a hardened criminal? No, but let's put the care in. The first thing 47 got rid of was the drug courts. And the first I, thing yeah, uh, it, well, your point's well taken. It's not that they got rid of it, but it can't be used as a hammer because it used Correct. to be when you had a wobbler yes. offense, well, you go to drug court and you get a misdemeanor. But now there's no opportunity for the prosecutor to, to use that. Correct. And let's be a prosecutor. Yeah. Let's be someone that's dedicated their, dedicated their lives to protecting mm -hmm. citizens. The it's, state, you know, and, they're, and they're calling it the Safe Neighborhood it's Act. It's so tricky the because there's no question that our society is frustrated with the kind of over-incarceration of the yes. 90s. But the question is, sir, are we swinging too far the other way? I believe the pendulum goes back and forth, needs to be in the middle. Yeah, it's tricky. His name is Robert Lovingood. He is the new president of Sandback, which deals with transportation projects in San Bernardino County. He is a supervisor in San Bernardino County. He's running for re-election. That election will be held in November. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We're coming to you from the Inland Empire on Charter Local Edition.